Do you want the one meter X carve, but your workspace is just too small to accommodate it? Then this folding table might be the perfect project for you. It turns on a dime. It turns on a dime. Unfo unfold it when you want to use it. Fold it back up when you're done. It's got a pouch for the brain. It's got a special spot just for the leg. And when you're all done, just tuck it in the corner. Tuck it and forget it. All kidding aside though, I think this is a useful little project for anyone who wants the big X car but don't quite have the space for it. If you do decide to use the plans, or if these plans inspire you to build something even better, then all I ask from you is that you give some charity to your local community. I loosely based the design on counterlever houses found on the shores of the Bosphorus. I'm glad I have an indoor workspace. So let me show you all the pieces we cut These out. are the six legs. And when I was looking, I was able to find some uh, quarter sawn, I guess this pine or some kind of pine. And this will be good because the way the pressure will be applied to these legs. This is the base. Uh, I chose the most dense pieces of pine I could find, or the heaviest ones I picked out to be the base. This is one half of the top frame. And this is the pivoting frame where the x carve is going to sit on top of. So I'm going to start by removing these and making these lap joints. The thickness here is about one inch. So this is our top rail, or the support for the x carve. The x carve itself has three rails in the back of it. So the center one will go between these two and this will butt up against the waste board. One will go the outside here, and it will go the outside here. You know, I definitely think there is a, a one wrong way, or several wrong way of assembling a project, but I don't really think there is a one right way of assembling a project. At least not this project. So, I'm just sort of starting from the base and building my way up, and that's just seems logical to me. I don't really think that you necessarily need to follow exactly what I did. This project, you can probably see it, look at it, and see how it's built. That was the idea, I was designing something simple. So here's the base of the cart, right here. And on it, we built some legs that go straight up. And these legs are framed. And the table's gonna fold up and down on this side. Let me show you how I'm gonna put that together. This thing's getting a little too big for my workbench. So the idea is to have this as the flap that moves up and down. And the X-car will sit on these rails here. And hopefully when it's folded like this, the X-car will take up very little space and it'll mostly be sticking out up here. So a while back, when uh, I saw some hinges on sale, I think for like a dollar a piece, I said buy a four, and that's exactly the number I need here. These are just regular door hinges. I think this will be strong enough. I don't think we need a piano hinge. So I've marked out the hinge area where it needs to go down about one eighth of an inch here. So now it sits nice and flush. This next part might be a little bit tricky because I've installed the flap onto these hinges here. So since they don't line up perfectly, I used these shims here and here to make sure that all of these guys are aligned on here perfectly. Otherwise, the folding and unfolding might be difficult. So we'll see if this works. So I got two sets installed. I'm going to do a test run to see how this looks. I don't think I need these shins anymore. Alright, so here we go. Okay, I think this is going to work. I'm going to go ahead and finish installing these guys before I move on to the next step. Also, my battery and my camera is dying. So. Eventually, I like to add a wheel like this right here. So I added a 
blocking piece that helps increase the surface area here, as well as a diagonal brace to increase the strength of this frame. So the frame of our X-carved table is pretty much finished. Uh, now we have to support this leaf. In my original design, I wanted something diagonal here, but it turned out that in practice that was more difficult, and there was a lot more problems with that design. So I came up with something much simpler to support this main part here. That so the S carve is up. Place the platform there. But this approach I think is much simpler than my original design. It's definitely easier to make. So the assembly is almost finished. I'm going to go ahead and give this coat of paint and install the wheels. And next we'll mount the x car onto this leaflet. Oh, I'll probably sand this thing too. Drives the producers crazy. That's probably strong enough for an x car. So I have good news and bad news. The good news is that this thing fits on the table pretty well. And the bad news, let me show you. So here it is sitting on top of the table. Now, apparently, you know what I forgot to account for? Uh, yeah, are these, so what I forgot to account for are these little triangular pieces that are uh, sort of hitting this piece of the support frame. And over here as well. So that's not a big deal, I don't think, but I don't really want to chance this, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that little corner off. All right, so the lesson is to uh, cut these things off earlier. So the way the, well, I selected the sizes is that this piece protrudes slightly further than the back of the motor, so that way, if this hits something, hopefully it'll give some protection to the motor if I'm moving it around. And on this side, same thing, but there are more wires on this side. So the space on this side is a little bit wider than the space on the other side. So all I got left now is to mount the x carve itself onto those four rails that are underneath it. many screws in here, I'm going to go ahead and test out the X-Car since I don't really know. I think everything's supposed to fit, but I don't really know. The moment of truth. What do you guys think? Think it's going to hit something? Better go slow. Yep. It did hit something, let me show you. So this cable now is being bound here. If we move that slightly out of the way, it's free to move. Actually what happened is this thing went past uh, 90 degrees. So I think if I put a block in here, it would, you know, a spacer in here. Let me go try that. back underneath here. Alright, so now this thing's moving. Oh, crap. <sighs> okay, I'll put a piece of 2x4 back there and let's test this again. It's still quite heavy. Alright, as far as I can tell, it's not hitting anything. And it's actually pretty easy to move. This is going to make this x carve a lot more useful. It's going to be a lot more useful in this space now that it can be stored on its side like that. So when I thought it was all finished, my wife asked me what's going to happen to this part while the x carve is running. And I thought, well, I don't know, I guess we better test it. So I carved this thing out, these letters, on my leather toolbox. And what I found was this card is very heavy. 
I mean, it doesn't move at all when this thing's moving. Uh, when it moves on the, what is this, the, the y-axis, these two motors are very powerful. And when it moves it, yeah, this, there's uh, more vibration when you move about half an inch at once. But at the rate which you move the x-carve, when it's actually carving stuff, uh, it doesn't move at all. And you don't feel that jerking motion. But if you were to you know, home the X car using the Y axis, you know, half an inch at once, you, the whole momentum and the force of this big weight moving half an inch and then stopping is going to like create a little bit of motion in the cart. Uh, and I can feel vibration on the surface of this waste board. And I'm guessing that's natural vibration because you know, with the spindle going and it's carving. But what I think I'm gonna do is add some leather damper or leather dampening underneath here. Three inches long, an inch and a half wide, 10 ounce leather. And I think these will sufficiently dampen the vibration of the x carve So this aluminum rail, when the table is open, is gonna sit on these, against these leather pieces. During the test run, what I found out is that this thing doesn't need to be screwed in at all. I just put a clamp here temporarily, thinking that it'll move or shift, but it actually didn't move, didn't shift at all throughout the entire process. So one of the last problems I have to solve is this control unit. And I had some Velcro laying around, I thought, you know, I'll just stick this stuff onto the back here, and I can stick the control unit onto the back of the x carve and detach it when I need to use it. But then I was reading about the instruction here and it says a maximum temperature for the adhesive is 49 degrees Celsius. And I don't really know if, I haven't used this enough to know if this thing ever reaches 49 degrees Celsius. So instead of Velcroing for this, I think I'm gonna use a different solution. But I think what will work well with is the legs. So I'm gonna attach some Velcro onto the legs and that will hopefully add uh, stability because it attaches tighter and also should dampen a little bit of the vibration. Uh, I think there's a problem because the tolerance here is so tight that this table can really only be lifted with this padding on about an eighth of an inch. So if I had Velcro on the top as well as Velcro on the bottom here, I think I'm gonna have a hard time putting the leg on as well as taking off. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the Velcro for the top here and test it out. So just as I suspected, once this Velcro is in, it's actually almost impossible to pull it out, at least not with my strength. So I can imagine if there's one on the bottom as well, it would be difficult if not very difficult to get it out and that's not the point so right now the only way to get this thing out is to lift this up slightly pull the bottom out and then pull this thing out this thing is actually holding the leg onto the base pretty good but it doesn't hurt to have a clamp there just in case so the last problem I needed to solve was where to put the brain of the x card and all these wires there are mounting holes on here for something, and maybe later I'll make some kind of a plate to mount it if I don't like the way I'm going to do it right now. But for now, what I did was make a little bag for it. So I thought about using canvas, but I felt like canvas was too tough of a material for this, and it doesn't have enough stretch. So I took a t-shirt, so my wife took a t-shirt, cut off the part beneath the arm, so it was a medium t-shirt, and it was very cold and made a little pouch and I took a, a shoelace and I put it in here. So now I have a pouch to keep all of these, the brain as well as the wiring that came with the x card. I know what you might be thinking, where is he gonna hang this thing? So I thought about using these things to help me hook the little baggie that has all the electronics. Then I thought, you know what, there's no need to reinvent the wheel because there are plenty of possibilities of using these clamps that came with the X-Carve. So I just hung it up there and it sort of dangles there. I think it's, you know, you don't want to rock this thing too much, but 
during normal transport, it doesn't really get rocked that much. You probably just have to push it carefully. But you should push it carefully anyways because these electronics are just sort of hanging out there. And charity doesn't always have to be money. Charity can be your time. Charity can be uh, a smile to someone who's having a bad day. And charity can be as simple as stopping and letting somebody cut in front of you. And the question I always wondered was, when is the best time to give charity? And the best answer I've ever read is to give charity when you are young, when you yourself are hungry for money. 